December 13th, uh, Wednesday today, out here on the lake. It's actually a really nice day, like 30 degrees and sunny right now. So we were down here yesterday and I wanted to try to do some uh, recording, but it was like 10 degrees and pretty windy. So it wasn't much fun to have the camera out. So deciding to do it, do it all today. So we got the four stroke down here and the 440, as well as the catalyst. Uh, that's all broken and ready to go fast on the ice. And uh, so yeah, today we're mainly trying some clutching stuff. We got a pretty good run uh, across the lake. So we're gonna try a, a whole bunch of clutching combinations on the four stroke today. Kind of go see how many see how many combinations we run through today. See if we can't find something that works or if our, if our uh, first setup is the best working setup, which it's kind of how it works sometimes. So. so here's the catalyst, all lowered, full ice mode. The only thing we're kind of waiting on right now is actually a windshield. And then it's pretty much, pretty much race ready. And so we fabbed up a seat. The stock seat is a little hard and a little tall. We felt like for ice racing. So it's actually a foam from a 08 Snow Pro and as well as a cover from a 08 Snow Pro. <laughs> and uh, just fabbed it up to the stock base and turned out pretty good. Good job, dad. <laughs> but it's actually three inches lower and a little bit softer material. So you actually sit lower in the sled as well. So right away, I liked it a lot better than the stock height seat, but I think we're gonna try a few more variations of it. But uh, so yeah, so far, catalyst set up. So we're out here with the trusty radar gun, uh, just to the first pass on my sled just to get a baseline, uh, kind of what's what it's running like today, and then make changes from there. And so now Dad's gonna make a run with the catalyst and uh, see what he's got for today. See if the speed's changed at all from yesterday. I'm gonna uh, throw a different secondary on there that we already have set up. We got a couple of team secondaries sitting here to throw on here. And uh, we already tried it yesterday and we knew it ran too many RPMs. So today, instead of throwing it on there and I know it's gonna run the same RPMs, we're gonna make a weight change already just to throw some weight at, see if we, see if we can't get it to come down into peak RPMs where we want it, so. First run, added some weight to the primary, actually lost a mile an hour and uh, was really low on uh, RPMs, S really slow to build RPMs. So test number one, not good. We'll go from there. Holy shit. Okay, test three, uh, same primary, different secondary. Still slow to build RPMs. And it's, uh, it's compared to yesterday where it was high in the RPMs. So adding that weight to the primary, I thought it would uh, drop back down to where I wanted it. But it's actually really doggy on building RPMs. So what I'm gonna try now is uh, different primary setup, go lighter weights and then go a little bit lighter finishing weight or finishing uh, yeah weight on the primary spring. See if we can't readjust on kind of how we want the RPMs to work. But uh, so yeah, test three, another eh, failed to failed attempt, so. how many tests that was but uh, that one was went back to the stock lighter weights and then also went to a lighter finishing primary spring and it was actually down on rpms on where i expected it to be so i was still looking for about another 200 rpms on top but uh, with that finishing rate on that primary spring it just won't get there so now i'm kind of in between primary springs because these team ones only go in increments of like 20. So if I could almost get one that only went up in 10, I think it'd be right where I wanted it. But so another test, 
uh, another kind of eh, setup of trying to find find something else but so we'll go again try again try another one I think about the most time consuming part of, of doing all these tests is trying to get the clutches up to a temperature. So it's not like you can just throw it on and go do a run. Cause like I gotta throw it on and I've been going probably a couple miles that way and making a loop almost. So putting a couple miles on at a time just to get the, the clutches and the belt up to like an operating temperature. So that's probably what takes the longest. Otherwise it'd be pretty slick and easy just to throw a, a, another clutch on and go do another run. But to get them up to temperature, that's probably just the most time consuming part of doing, doing it all. So just some fun facts. Well, I think test number five or six, that one felt pretty good. Uh, first couple runs were good. And so we tried it a little bit longer. And that's the thing with, uh, with what we have to try to figure out is how, this, how these clutch setups work once they get hot. Because you can have a clutch setup that works good in the first lap or two laps or even three laps. But once you're 80, 90 miles into a 100 mile race and you're starting to really drop RPMs, that makes a heck of a difference on top speed. So that's another test that we have to do is once you get a setup that works, it's like just push it farther and farther because it's it's about the most abuse you could ever do to a clutch setup is run it wide open across the lake for two hours or hour and a half or whatever we run. But so yeah, that was another test that was kind of eh. It's almost like your first setup that you you baseline everything off of is almost like almost usually what you always go back to. It takes a lot of test and R&D to actually get your good baseline setup changed. So, I don't know, try, try something else again. The old 440, see what she's got. So I keep talking about all these clutch setups and what I'm trying and what I'm doing. And I, I feel bad or kind of silly not being able to tell you guys what exactly I'm changing but as you know like most racers they they like to keep their setups or their secrets kind of can't really show your hand kind of kind of thing so just have to take my word for it to what we're changing and giving you a little bit of information of what we're changing at least but not exactly like the helix angles or or the clutch weights or that's kind of the that's kind of the secret stuff. But I don't know. I figure it's pretty cool information to hear about, at least if you're not getting the full details of the, the grams and the, the degrees of everything, so I don't know. Okay, that concludes a full day out on the lake testing clutch setups. I think we went through three or four helixes, uh, three or four different sets of weights, and two to three different uh, primary clutch springs, and uh, evidently kind of went back to the same setup we came down here with. So, but got to try something. So, yeah, we got another uh, another full day out on the lake here, and uh, yeah, probably be back again tomorrow. I think this is day five in a row of being down here. So we're getting plenty of time on, but trying everything we can. Yeah, what's your first, what's your initial thoughts on the new catalyst since you've been the one kind of breaking it in the most? I've been on the four stroke. It's got a lot of low end power and it uh, rides really good. <laughs> Short answer, but so yeah, that's dad th dad's thoughts on the catalyst. We've been kind of messing with some uh, toe, toe out on it to kind of get it to steer nice and straight and nice and neutral down the straightaways. So we've been kind of playing with that a little bit. Um, I've yet to have like a full day of actually putting in a, moto, a good moto on it. So hopefully I can do that 
maybe tomorrow or Saturday or Sunday and we'll get a video on that to see what uh, my thoughts are on it. But I don't know. Thanks all the new subscribers, all the new subscribers. Really appreciate it. Hopefully there's some good content. So thanks.